Little Dorothy and Toto, A Little Lizard Story, by L. Frank Baum, and me. Dorothy was a little Kansas girl who once accidentally found the beautiful land of Oz and was invited to live there always. Okay, that was unclear, I feel, from, from the book. Toto was Dorothy's small black dog with fuzzy curly hair and bright black eyes. Together, when they tired of the grandeur of the Emerald City of Oz, they would wander out to the country and all through the land, peering into queer nooks and corners and having a good time in their own simple way. There was a little lizard living in Oz who was a faithful friend of Dorothy and did not approve of her traveling alone in this way. But the girl always laughed at the little man's, or the little lizard's, uh, fears for her. And she said she was not afraid of anything that might happen. Um, okay. Things went, like, very badly last time. Like, there's the whole, like, almost dying a bunch of times. The Wicked Witch. Uh, the monkeys, flying monkeys. Has she learned nothing? One day, while on such a journey... Dorothy and Toto found themselves among the wild wooded hills. <laughs> Those hills, man, they're wild. <laughs> At the southeast of Oz, a place usually avoided by travelers because so many magical things abounded there. And as they entered a forest path, the little girl noticed a sign tacked to a tree which said, Look out for crinkling. I don't know why I gave the sign an accent. Look out for crinkling, says the sign. Hello. Um, that, seems, that seems like it's going to be foreshadowing. I'm just going to guess. Uh, we meet. Crink, click. Crink, link. Toto could not talk. Well, duh. As many of the animals of Oz can. For he was just a common Kansas dog. But he looked at the sign so seriously that Dorothy almost believed he could read it. Okay, Dorothy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and knew she knew quite well that Toto understood every word she said to him. Well, not quite how dogs work there, Dorothy. <laughs> Never mind, Crinklink, she said. I don't believe anything in Oz would try to hurt us, Toto. And if I get in trouble, you must take care of me. Again, the whole Wicked Witch thing. And how's, how's a dog really, you know, going to help much? Bow wow, said Toto. And Dorothy knew that meant a promise. No, no, Dorothy. No. The path was narrow and wound here and there between the trees. But they could not lose their way because the thick vines and creepers shut them in. Uh, that shut them in on both sides. They had walked a long time when suddenly, turning a curve of the pathway, they came upon a lake of black water so big and deep that they were forced to stop. Well, Toto, said Dorothy, looking at the lake, we must turn back, I guess, for there is neither a bridge nor a boat to take us across the black water. I love how much he's just, like, talking out loud. Never once have I said to a dog, there's no bridge or boat to take us across black water. N not, not a single time. Here's the ferryman, though, cried a tiny voice beside them. And the girl gave a start and looked down at her feet, uh, where a man no taller than three inches sat on the edge of the path with his legs dangling over the lake. That's like a carrot. A baby carrot. Oh, said Dorothy. I didn't see you before. Well, yeah, he's three inches. You probably almost stepped on him. Toto growled fiercely and made his ears stand up straight, but the little man did not seem to be in the least afraid of the dog. He merely repeated, I'm the ferryman, and it's my business to carry people across the lake. Huh? What luck. I mean, great... Great timing. Dorothy couldn't help but feeling surprised. 
for she could have picked up the little man with one hand, and the lake was big and broad. Yeah, there seems to be a little, pro a little problem here. Looking at the fairy man more closely, she saw that he had small eyes, a big nose, and a sharp chin. His hair was blue. His hair was blue? Okay, maybe, maybe start with that, and then mention the three inches thing. His hair was blue and his clothes scarlet, and Dorothy noticed that every button on his jacket was the head of some animal. What? Why? The top button was a bear's head, and the next button a wolf's head, and the next was a cat's head, and next a, a weasel's head, while the last button of all was the head of a field mouse. When Dorothy looked into the eyes of these animals, they all nodded and said in a chorus, Don't, Don't believe all you hear, little girl. I'm sorry, the buttons are talking? This suddenly just went off the rails. If this story was called Dorothy and the Talking Buttons, we... We could have known and just skipped it. Silence, said the small fairy man, slapping each button head in turn, but not hard enough to hurt them. Then he turned to Dorothy and asked, Do you wish to cross over the lake? Why, I'd love to, she answered, hesitating. But uh, I, I can't see how you can manage to carry us without a boat. If you can't see, you mustn't see, <laughs> he answered with a laugh. All you need to do is shut your eyes, say the word, and over you go. It's not how science works, fairy man. Dorothy wanted to get across in order that she might continue her journey. Dorothy, this is a very, very stupid thing you want to do. Go back to Kansas. What? There's, there's a place called Mount Sunflower in Kansas, I've heard, and it's a very excellent place, I presume. I have not been there, but it sounds much nicer than a black lake. And the sunflowers. Who doesn't like them? All right, she said, closing her eyes. I'm ready. Instantly, she was seized in a pair of strong arms, arms so big and powerful that she was startled and cried out in fear. <laughs> Silence, roared a great voice, and the girl opened her eyes to find that the tiny man had suddenly grown into a giant and was holding her and Toto in a tight embrace with one step, he spanned the lake and reached to the other shore. Frankly, that was unexpected. Dorothy became frightened then, especially as the giant did not stop, but continued trampling in great steps over the wooded hills, crushing the bushes and the trees beneath his broad feet. She struggled in vain to free herself, while Toto whined and trembled beside her, for the little dog was frightened too. Stop, screamed the girl, let me down. But the giant paid no attention. Who are you? Wh where are you taking me? She continued, but the giant did not say a word. Frankly, that is not unexpected. Close to Dorothy's ear, however, a voice answered her saying, This is the terrible Crinklink, and he has you in his power. Let me guess, the talking button. The, like, this is, this is literature? Dorothy managed to twist her head around and found it was the second button on the jacket. Oh, yes, the second button. How very nice. Ow. The second button, how very nice. What a twist from being the first button. She found the second button on the jacket was talking, the wolf's head, which had spoken to her. What will Crinkling do with me? She asked anxiously. No one knows. You must wait and see, replied the wolf. Some of his captive he whips, squeaked the weasel's head. I'm not, I'm not even going to do different voices for these buttons. I don't care. I'm just doing my regular voice. Uh, no one knows. You must wait and see, replied the wolf. Some of his captives he whips, squeaked the weasel's head. Uh, some he transforms into bugs and other things, growled the bear's head. Some he enchants so they become doorknobs, sighed the cat's head. Doorknobs? Of all other things, door... <sighs> Some he even makes us slaves, even as we are. And that's the most dreadful fate of all, added the field mouse. As long as Crinkling exists, we shall remain buttons. <sighs> I'm, about to, I'm about to stop. <sighs> but as there are no more buttonholes on this jacket, he will probably make you a slave. Well then, whoopee, whoopee ding. Dorothy began to wish she had not met Crinkling. You don't say.
Listen to the buttons, Dorothy. Meanwhile, the giant took big steps and soon reached the heart of the hills, where, perched upon the highest peak, stood a log castle. Before this castle, he paused to set down Dorothy and Toto, for Crinklink was, at present, far too large to enter his own doorway. That sounds like an architect's problem. Uh, maybe you, you bought a, a bad one. So he made himself grow smaller until he was a, about the size of an ordinary man. Oh, uh, whatever an ordinary man is. Then he said to Dorothy in a stern commanding tone, Enter, girl. Okay, that's when it's time to click the heels, okay? Doesn't, does she not have the slippers anymore? What, what is she doing? Dorothy obeyed and entered the castle with Toto at her heels. She found the place to be merely one big room. What a disappointment. There was a table and a chair of ordinary size. Stop describing the chairs, you're doing a bad job. There was a table and a chair of ordinary size in the center, and at one side a wee bed that seemed scarcely big enough for a doll. Everywhere else were dishes, dishes, dishes. I want to point out, that's what the book said, dishes three times. I didn't just go off about them. They were all soiled and were piled up on the floor and in all corners and upon every shelf. Evidently, Crinklink had not washed a dish for years but had cast them aside as he used them. This keeps getting more bizarre. Year He's not washed a dish for years. And he hasn't gotten rid of them. He simply kept them in his house. Uh, Frank, Frank Ball must have had like a bad experience with chores. Dorothy's captor sat down in the chair, the ordinary one, <laughs> and frowned at her. You are young and strong and will make a good dishwasher, said he. Yes, yes. Strength is what you need the most for dishes. Do you mean me to wash all those dishes? She asked, feeling both indignant and fearful. Yeah, I would be fearful too. For such a task would take weeks to accomplish weeks that's just what i mean he retorted i need clean dishes for all i have are soiled and you are going to make them clean or get trounced so get to work and be careful not to break anything if you smash a dish the penalty is one lash from my dreadful cat o nine's tail for every piece the dish breaks into. Oh, what? And here Crinkling displayed a terrible whip that made the girl shudder. Also, how many dishes did he buy? Let's just Marie Kondo the place. Keep a couple dishes and throw the rest out. Dorothy knew how to wash dishes. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is this book? Dorothy knew how to wash dishes. But she remembered that often she carelessly broke one. Often? How often? In this case, however, a good deal depended on being careful. So she handled the dishes very cautiously. While she worked, Toto sat by the hearth and growled low at Crinklink. And Crinklink sat in his chair and growled. <laughs> he growled at Dorothy because she moved so slowly. He expected her to break a dish any minute. He has nothing better to do like the dishes. He expected her to break a dish any minute, but as the hours passed away and this did not happen, Crinklink began to grow sleepy. It was tiresome watching the girl wash dishes. Oh yes, it is just, I'm sure that's just so tough for him, watching someone else doing the dishes. This is the world's smallest record player playing My Heart Bleeds For You. It was tiring watching the little girl wash dishes, and often he glanced longingly at the tiny bed. This is why retributive justice never works. Now he began to yawn, and he yawned, and he yawned, 
until he finally said, I am going to take a nap. I really need to start writing my own stories. With the buttons on my jacket, we'll be one week. I would you make a dish. A cash will wake in a minute. As I'm rather sleepy, I hope you won't. I interrupt my nap by breaking anything for a long time. The buttons don't really seem to be on your side, buddy. Uh, just saying. Then Crinklink made himself grow smaller and smaller until he was three inches and of the size to fit the tiny bed. At once, he lay down and fell fast asleep. That sounds like a good place to end. Dorothy came close to the buttons and whispered, Would you really warn Crinklink if I tried to escape? You can't escape, growled the bear. Crinklink would become a giant and soon overtake you, but you might kill him while he sleeps, suggested the cat in a soft voice. Oh, that is dark. Oh, I couldn't possibly kill anything, even to save my life. But Toto had heard this conversation and was not so particular about killing monsters. Well then, also the little dog knew he must try to save his mistress. In an instant, he sprang upon the wee bed and was about to seize the sleeping crinklink in his jaws. When Dorothy heard a loud crash and a heap of dishes fell from the table to the floor. Dun, dun, dun. The jig's up. The girl saw Toto and the little man rolling on the floor together like a fuzzy ball. And when the ball stopped rolling, behold, there was Toto wagging his tail joyfully. And there sat the little Lizard of Oz, laughing merrily at the expression of surprise on Dorothy's face. <laughs> yes, my dear, it's me, he said, and I've been playing tricks on you for your own good. I wanted to prove to you that it really is dangerous for a little girl to wander alone in a fairy country, so I took the form of Crinklink to teach you a lesson. There isn't any Crinklink, to be sure, but if there had been, you'd be severely whipped for breaking all those dishes. Wait, for real? That's a horrible trick. Remember the time when I was going to turn you into a doorknob? Uh, what, what a friendship. The lizard now rose, took off the coat with the button heads, and spread it on the floor, wrong side up. Of course he did. At once there crept from beneath it a bear, a wolf, a cat, a weasel, and a field mouse, who all rushed from the room and escaped into the mountains. I'm not even going to mention how we let kidnapping animals go by. Come on, Toto, said Dorothy. Let's go back to the Emerald City. You've given me a good scare, wizard, lizard. You've given me a good scare, lizard, she added with dignity. And perhaps I'll forgive you, by and by. But just now I'm mad to think how easily you fooled me. That's the end. Like, like for real, that's the end. I, I'm completely gobsmacked. I, I can't even. I can't, I can't even. What a, what a lizard. What an absolute lizard. For, thanks for listening. Uh, if you ever listen again, bless you. Little Dorothy and Toto is a chapter taken from Little Wizard Stories of Oz by L. Frank Baum, and it is in the public domain. The Violin Concerto in D Major Opera 61, Allegro Manan Troppo. Uh, 
uh, the excellent music in the public domain. Sound effects from freesfx.co.uk, uh, some from the National Park Service, and me. Uh, be sure to check out the podcast of the wonderful Lizard of Oz wherever you get your podcasts. It does make me wonder, like, when the lizard bought the countertop, and did he call a uh, a rep tile agent? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, a lizard.